Let's get on with it. I'll take you inside. So, this is the Geordie Golfer HQ. At the moment, you might think that doesn't look too much like a golf studio. And to be fair, you would be right. It isn't currently a golf studio. This is a room that I built. A little bit of help from a plasterer and also an electrician um, and uh, a good team of guys who did the external cladding and stuff for me. But the building itself was physically built by me in steel and I put some images up. And it was to replace what was previously a tent. Interestingly, nobody actually appears very much to use tents for a trial golf simulator. And what I can tell you all is that it's a great idea with the exception of when you get Storm Arwen blowing through at 100 miles an hour. And unfortunately my golf sim ended up going into next door's garden. But it was really cool, it served a purpose and also the daughter got a lot out of it because her and her friends came around and kind of had sort of little parties and stuff and that. So it was a bit of a party space. We made the most of it and it was a trial, but then ultimately this beckoned and consequently there it is. However, as you can see, not much of a golf studio. This is currently in entertainment mode. So basically you can see the bar over there, the sign by the way, Oscars. Um, we've got a border terrier now called Sevi, but our previous dog, Oscar, who was in doggy heaven, um, this place was named in his honour. So there we go, that's the Oscar sign, that's why that's there. So what I'm going to show you is what I do to turn this into a golf simulator. I'm going to remove all the furniture and then I'm going to show you what's behind this false wall here. And as if by magic, the room is now clear. That is an awesome golf bag, isn't it? So before I show you how I make the golf simulator appear, the idea of this was, this was only going to really work or be justified from a family spend point of view, is if we could use it for a few things. So golf simulator, we can use it with a projector, so it's a cinema room, and it's obviously an entertainment space. At the moment, it was getting used more for the entertainment, but then recently since launched a YouTube channel, it's getting used quite a lot for the golf. So here we go. I'll fill this in real time so you can see how long this takes. It's not that long. That's on casters, that's what the raggedy noise is. So first of all, if I can just point out a couple of things here. This is flooring and it weighs a ton. And I'll show you what I did to get around this problem. But this on its own weighs about 55 kilos with the mat on. And that's the big problem with a simulator. If you're not going to use it as a simulator, where do you put the mat? when you want to store it away because they're great big heavy things and the one I've got is the one with the rubber backing so obviously it gets it's pretty heavy to move around first of all and you've got to try and store it somewhere so this is a dual double purpose sort of thing now as I said before this weighs about 55 kilos however that didn't look 55 kilos did it so here's the mat and what I've got on here is you can see there's those little star knobs which have just got washer plates on them. So the idea there is they go into captive nuts on the back. So unscrew these. And then let's pull this back. So now you can see we've got the hitting area. Obviously when you're hitting shots as well, what's quite good is that because this is here, it stops the mat wanting to move, although because it's got the rubber base, it's pretty solid anyway. Then the last bit to do is to put the protection up for the ceiling.
ta-da! Now you have a golf sim. One thing left to do. So, as you see what we've done now, is just bang out the, the slot, the slot windows we've got up there. Close the blinds on the bifolds. Decent projector. Happy days, ready to start playing golf. So then in this little secret door, I've got the keyboard with the combined mouse pad, which obviously that I just used directly below the screen. Sky track, kind of normally positioned about here somewhere. Now just to talk through this for a moment, essentially the doors that you see here, well the doors that you could see a moment ago, all of those doors are basically kitchen cupboard doors. Maximum height that I could get. Um, and then obviously behind there I've put a stud frame in to obviously attach the panels to. The doors are quite challenging because obviously the doors need to open quite wide. So on this side I use a double door to then create sort of the, basically the shank protection let's say, if you pipe one over there. This door here, I could have also done a double door, but I wanted to turn back on itself just so there was plenty of space here to actually walk into the room. Because I felt that if I was standing here, hitting shots, although I wouldn't get anywhere near that door if it was a double door, the reality is it might be in people's mind. So therefore that's why that's essentially a, a double leaf door that folds back on itself. Again, just standard sort of kitchen stuff. Now, the, the bit you see here, which is a, a, a wire rope. Now this wire rope goes, attaches on there, another one on that side, goes up and into a frame I've got on the inside of this wall. Now, the stuff in here is kind of where all the, the secret thing is, and also, I'm not gonna lie, it's not exactly built to present and show people, but let's take you in and have a quick look. So there you go. Isn't that picturesque? You can see what I've actually got here is a scaffold frame. It's all cold fixed connections. It's just, it's all, um, as you can see those connections up there, they're just basically Allen key connections, nothing too clever. And along the top, I've then got a goalpost arrangement at this end and at the far end. So you can see it at that end as well. And what's going on here, first of all, with the with the mat on the other side is, you can see before those um, wires, when you see that wire, you can see that wire I mentioned before, there it is coming up behind the screen, and that goes up behind the screen, and then you can see there's those two pulleys, which then essentially change its direction, and then fire that wire down to this end. Hopefully you still see it's getting a bit dark. And then likewise, you can see on this side you can also see the cable coming out on that one again through a couple of pulleys and then they are both then commoned up and attached to that large weight which as you can see also has another couple of dumbbells on it because i was just playing around to get the right weight of it so essentially it's just a very straightforward cantilever so i can't leave us out that pulley then pulls that weight up, which takes the weight of the actual thing to stop me putting my back out every time I move it. So if I come on the outside here to show you what's going on with the screen. So here we are, standing in front of the screen. This is the bit that you head into. So on here, I've got this screen. This screen is attached with bungee cables to an archery screen here. Now on the other side, This archery screen is then just attached to the stud frame that I put in. And that stops any golf balls coming into, the, into this part of the, the room, let's say. The shoot bolt that you might have saw me adjust on the other side is here. So obviously you just adjust that from the other side. You can hold the metal rod from that side and just rotate this and, and pull this batter and forwards from the other side. You don't physically have to come in to use this handle. And then in addition to the, uh, the archery screen, basically I had some of this left. This was just spare, which originally I was going to use for the sides and stuff. I thought it would look a bit rubbish. 
Um, so I thought I'd just use this just to help as another dampener. And then in addition to that, I've then got this mat, which essentially is just the leftover material that I had from the green mat that's on the other side. And what I've done up here looks a bit odd, but there's a method. That wire that you see, not the, not the wire I showed you before, this just, you know, this, this, this wire here that's got attached up coming across here. That wire there is pulling that, you can see there's a gap that I've created here. So this, this gap here is by me pulling that wire tight or loose to then create the gap that I want, which then allows the ball to bounce back into the right position where it, where it kind of comes back my feet but doesn't come flying back and hit anything. So that's what that's doing there. Um, and then finally, as far as the, uh, the screen itself is attached all the way around that perimeter frame, you can see that I've basically got a picture frame and I bungee cord the screen back to it, but it's actually coming through. So you can see on here, that's the actual cable that joins onto the screen itself. And then that's bungee corded around to here. So although it comes through the archery screen, the archery screen really is just purely to act as, a, as an additional dampening and also to attach to the side of the actual stud wall. And then at the bottom, what I did, I bought some bits and pieces that I was using in the temporary setup I had originally. So some of the things aren't quite the right size. It, in reality, I would actually make the screen slightly shorter if I did it again, because all, all of this material you see here is excess, but just basically gets tucked under and I've got a cargo strap which is from there across to the other side and this in the screen sort of tucks under it and, and under and then ties onto this side here. So that's basically the mechanics of what goes on. Um, in addition to that is there is a, a monitor here. Uh, that's that does actually work, but I never use it because there's there's no necessity to. So the only thing left to, the only thing left to show you in here really is the is the gaming PC, which as you can see that's it there. Um, just got this built by somebody I know who actually builds computers. I've updated this graphics card since, since buying it. Um, when I started using some of the more demanding golf course on GS Pro, it needed to have an upgrade. Other than that, there's just then the cables and stuff which are attached to this, which then go through the walls, and then everything else is kind of hidden. Um, so obviously you can see there's no wires here at all. Um, the projector. Um, is up there. I've just got a little like sort of blind as it were uh, So that just sort of blinds off part of the image because of this the way I've configured the room as you can see th This is obviously very square um, And to get a projector that puts on that it distorts all the image and stuff And then obviously if I want to use it for a cinema room and stuff, it's not very good I've got the screen if I show you on the TV. It's better so the TV, you can see that that, that that hitting line is sort of offset, it's not bang in the middle. So I've got that offset, so it look, works quite well here with, with the mat as well. So as you can see here, when I put the sky track down, the sky track is the same height as the mat, so that's quite good. This all then lines up with the, the hitting line, the hitting line that's on the, on the screen there, as you can see. Um, and basically the bit of the image that's missing is, is this bit. But the good thing about GS Pro is that you can have the tiles on this side as well as this side. So all I'm missing on the screen is that right hand side. And then the only reason I've then got that blind, that this, this sort of bit that sticks down here is just purely to, to stop the image appearing on here or, or around the corner. Cause it looks a bit rubbish. It looks, it looks obvious that the projectors the, are slightly different uh, resolution to the actual size of the, the screen itself. So guys, that's the end of the tour. I hope that was enlightening to some people. Maybe it inspired some of you to do your own project. I do honestly think that if you're thinking of building your own uh, golf simulator, trying to build it with a dual purpose is a good idea because it means it's not just your space, whoever the golfer is in the family. Um, and if you've got kids or just basically another requirement for using the room for things like we do for entertaining or that kind of stuff and have a few good parties in here, 
Uh, it's really cool and you know you get more out of it than just having it for one person or maybe you know if you're a family of golfers that's great but if you're not a family of golfers having one room for one person and the cost of these things um, it's quite a lot and you know that, that's, that's money just purely on you. So if anyone wants to do something similar to this by all means reach out to me and ask a few more detailed questions if you wish. Hopefully I'll give you enough of an indication as to how I've done it. It's all very much timber bit parts that you buy from a DIY store. There's nothing specialist whatsoever in here. Basically a straightforward stud wall, kitchen panels, weir rock flooring for the, the panel that folds up and folds down which holds the, the hitting mat on it. It's, there's genuinely nothing that sort of clever in here, but you've got to have an imagination as to how we can make this work in your house. It's kind of what ultimately started the Geordie Golfer channel really. I uh, did an interview with uh, a friend of mine, a guy called Mitch, who has the Handicap Golf, who's on YouTube. Me and him did an interview together, and it was on the back of that interview, I thought, well actually why don't I give YouTube a go as well? So this kind of then became the hub for doing golf videos and stuff. I'm hoping to do a lot more course vlogs this year and get out on the golf course when it's quiet. Um, so I'll see you as a bit more to come. But hopefully this was a bit of a, a different type of video. Hopefully it's, um, I know there's quite a lot of people who like to see how other people make their golf sims. So let me know, chuck some comments in there if you think it's a, a good thing to have a hidden away sim or whether you think it should just be purpose built and left there permanently as a permanent fixture. Let me know what you think. Um, if you did like this video, please give me a like and also smash that subscribe button if you don't mind, that would be great. Uh, got a bit more content coming out. Uh, I'm carrying a little bit of an injured shoulder at the moment, um, so I haven't played any golf this uh, week. So I'm hoping to get back out in the golf course soon and get some content coming your way. So thanks everyone. Hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next one.